quadratic functions in vertex form, number one, check out what I have assembled on the right for all of you in my Desmos calculator. This is a colorful, parabola-filled utopia over here. A little reminder here. Now let's actually, let's just click over here. So this red graph, y equals x squared, is your regular old parabola right in the middle at 0, 0. Your blue one, plus 5, not in parentheses, means it's going to go up 5. Your green one means down 5. Your purple one, where we plus in the inside of parentheses, means left 5. And your black one, which has minus 5 on in the inside of parentheses, is right 5. All of these are review for what we're going to do today. So hit attempt quiz now. Dive right into it. We're going to take this knowledge and we're going to answer some questions. And I don't know why it skipped ahead to number nine for me, but don't worry about that. We'll get there eventually. So number one says, write the coordinates of the vertex as an ordered pair for the function below. Okay. Well, right off the bat, we could see a few things. This fraction in front. Let's examine what happens to that. All right, I'm going to clear this beautiful diagram here that serves as review for what we did last time. If I have my y equals x squared, there it is. If I add a fraction in front, like 7 over 8, it's really hard to tell because 7 over 8 is kind of, it's kind of just a number close to 1. In fact, 7 over 8 divides to 87.5% of 1. But if I made this fraction smaller, like say 1, of, 1 over 8, watch what happens to my graph. Ooh, what about 1 over 80? Whoa! The smaller my fraction, the more shrunk, the more wilted like a flower this parabola becomes. However, if I add a, a whole number in front, that's getting larger and larger, then my parabola becomes vertically stretched. It's like a rubber band that gets pulled up and get, becomes skinnier and skinnier. All right. Now, what's interesting about that, we're going to do a lot of problems that have to do with that later. But for now, when it comes to figuring out the ordered pair, it actually has no value on determining the ordered pair for my vertex. It determines how shrunk or stretched my parabola is, but in no way moves that vertex point. Instead, all I have to do, well, I mean, I could type this in and show you, including the 7 over 8. Notice how the squared, like I said last time, is on the outside of parentheses. I know that this minus 7 in parentheses is going to mean right 7, and I know that this down this down, this minus one on the outside of parentheses is going to mean down one. And sure enough, when I click on the vertex point, the vertex point either means the minimum of our bottom or our maximum of our top, it will show us the point seven, negative one. Right seven, down one. Seven, negative one. So you'll notice that that point, if we just look at our equation, I know it was easy to look from the graph's perspective, it gave us the answer, but we didn't even need the graph. You just do the opposite of this for your x point. So the opposite of negative 7 is positive 7. And whatever your outside number is here, negative 1, that's just your y coordinate. So down here, I'm not even going to type this in. I'm just going to say, hey, what's the opposite of negative 9? Well, that's positive 9. And then the number out here, plus 6, that's automatically my answer of up 6. And if you want to, you could type in that whole equation, and you could see your minimum point at 9, 6, totally up to you. But for me, I want to just show you that you could do it with the graph. You could just do it with the equation. It's totally up to you. A lot of ways you can find the vertex point. Okay, that's a, a lot of nice just warm-ups. Now we're going to match up graphs. Now, with the Desmos calculator, this is a cinch. You could literally type in your equation, the f of x, you could literally type that in too if you want to replace the y. It's actually the same thing. f of x and y functionally mean the same thing in an equation. This says function with respect to x, but if I replace that with the y, it's going to give me the same exact graph. Okay. So I could type that in, but I could also just look at this and go, let me find the graph that's left 1, because it's plus 1 in parentheses, and up 5. 
left one up five. So it should be like right here where I'm pointing. Left one up five, right there. And yeah, I can go through all the work, replacing my equation here. Typing in parenthesis x plus 1 squared plus 5. Oh, yeah, there it is. Or I can simply just look at my graph from my equation and do it that way. All right, the next one's interesting because it's the first time that we have a situation where we have a negative sign. Check this out. A negative sign on the very front of our graph. Let's zoom in. Let's go 125% here. Okay. A negative at this point in the graph. Let's see what happens. We know that the 2 is going to make it twice as vertically stretched. It's going to become skinnier. But what does the negative do? 3, 2, 1. Okay. One more time. There's without the negative. There's with the negative. Without the negative, with the negative. Without the negative, with the negative. You'll notice that this vertex point stays the same regardless of whether it is flipped or not. But like you see your reflection in a lake, the negative makes it reflected down. It's the exact same shape, just backwards, where instead of a U-shape up, I like to tell students that when you see a negative here, think of in for negative, and an in generally looks like that. So I've got my parabola with my maximum point, and that's going to be true every time we have this in for negative at the front, no matter what the rest of my equation is. If it's a negative sign right after the equal sign, it's going to be an upside down parabola with a maximum vertex point on top. Okay. So we know that. We also know that it's going to be right 6 and up 2. Well, let's look at my first one. Right 6, up 2, and upside down. Bam. There it is. All of them that are U-shapes I know are not correct. This is left 6. That's a regular U-shape. That's right, but only right uh, 2 and up 6, so backwards. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. Not what I want. I want right 6, up 2. Okay. Can you see the pattern yet? Well, let's check the next one. Okay. This one does not have a negative right after the equal sign, so it's not going to be an N. It's going to be a regular U shape like our first graph here. And it's going to be three right, two down. Three right, two down. Oh my gosh, it's the first one again. So you can just look at these. Don't even have to type them in. I mean, you can if you want to. I like having different strategies for different students, whether you're somebody who's really visual in your learning or not. But it's good to know just from the equation, like this one. It's not going to be upside down because there's no negative. It's going to be left 5 and up 2. Left 5, up 2. I want to find one that's right there. Left 5, up 2, right there. Left 5, up 2. It's a U-shape. And that's it. Knowing that it's kind of a fun game and gives you some confidence that no matter what, you can really do these problems. Let's look at this next one. Okay, this one's going to be upside down because it's got the, the negative over here. And it's negative too, coincidentally enough. Coincidentally, coincidentally enough. Whew, say that 10 times fast. All right. Upside down, three right, one down. Three right, one down, upside down. And I haven't typed one in in a while, so let me just show you. But that's exactly where it's going to look. Minus three means three right and one down. Point three one, or three negative one. The point three negative one, it all matches up. It's a different color, but that doesn't matter. It's that graph. This one's left, still left, 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 right, but not in the correct spot. We don't want one right, three down. We want three down, three right, one down. Yay. Okay. Regular U-shape on this one. The one half is going to make it vertically shrunk. It's going to be a little wilted. I love how this Desmos calculator updates in real time. The squared goes on the outside. 
right five down six right five down six so let's find the one that's right five down six there u-shaped graph right five down six and bazinga there it is all right, final two problems. We know what they are because we started this assignment for some reason with them. Do we have a minimum or maximum? Well, you have a 50-50 guess. If we do not have a negative in front, so there's no negative after the equal sign, then we have a regular U, just like this graph up here. No negative, so it's a regular U, and if it has a regular U, then that's a bottom point or a minimum. Contrastly, if I have a negative right after the equal sign, what we've reviewed and learned this lesson, if I have a negative after the equal sign, then, like number 10, that has a top point down here at 5, negative 6, you can see, and a top point is called a maximum. So if it's a negative right after the equal sign, it's a maximum every time. If it doesn't have one, it's a minimum every time. And there are the last two problems you can see. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Finishing up, we're going to have quite a few problems just like this in a quite a few assignments just like this. You're going to get really good at this. Submit all, submit all, and finish. Always want to make sure we end these videos by seeing that 100%. Okay. Wow. I guess I previewed this 26 days and 23 hours ago. Wow. <laughs> Hopefully it didn't take you that long. I think the student record for a single assignment is like 80 days. It's not a, not a record to be proud of necessarily. All right. As always, hope this video finds you safe, happy, healthy, and well. This has been Class Away from Class from your teacher, Dylan, hoping that you put the fun in functional and in quadratic functions.